Hi muckers, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're all doing really well. So I want to add a little bit more context to something we said in a video. Me throwing you under the bus too. Oh, we said it. <laughs> no, something I said on a stream um, a couple days ago when I was reacting to the H3 um, PowerPoint on Swip and Josh. And the only reason we did it was because um, when we were live, H3 were live, and it was just something we were watching along. I didn't even intend to watch the entire thing, but we did. And there was a part in it where um, they talk about Josh's last text to Colleen. And I'm going to play the clip, and then I'm going to read you out, because Josh has commented on the video with basically basically telling me to, like, you know, he knows the truth about the situation because he was there. Um, but I want to play the clip because I had no bad intentions, and... I am going to read what he said. So the clip was his final message to Colleen being when you're like effing Eric in our bed, like I hope you think of me and like spread happiness or something, right? And I said, from my knowledge, something along the lines of it sounds very dramatic. Like it sounds very like teen movie, like, you know, like last kind of statement. And it was just something I thought in the moment. And it was, I mean... You know, like, I'm good. I'm still going to be, like, honest, like, it, in, obviously, Josh goes on to say that a lot was cut out of the interviews and stuff for timing and stuff, and obviously, things can sound more dramatic than what they are, um, if you're not hearing someone talk about it for a long period of time, and that's no one's fault at all, it literally is just timing, um, but I want to play the clip, and then we'll get to it, okay? Because I want to hear again what I said as well that he's responding to, let's get to it. That Josh sent to Colleen. Not my tweet. That's the thing I said to her. That's like, a, you have not so said anything to her. In person, the last thing he said to her was, when you're fucking Eric in our bed, I want you to think about me. And then he tells the last text. Do you think that was a... Can I be honest? Yes. Is this a safe space? No. When Josh says that this is the last thing that he said to her and stuff... Hey! How you doing? <laughs> How you doing, Adam? <laughs> I don't believe that. I don't believe it. Like, I feel like it was like... I feel like it was very his way of... This is frenemies right here. With, like, and then I said this. And then I walked away. The last thing you said to her was when you're fucking Eric in our bed. I mean, it just kind of feels like a teen movie moment, right? I don't really believe it. No, I, again, I'm going to believe it because he said it, but... Sorry. Sorry, my door nearly shut and I have no door handle, so I would have been locked in. Let me it pull just... it. I don't know. Oops, shit. I don't know. I mean, if it is true, good for him. Uh, or sorry, not actually, whoa, not good for him. But it was kind of the only thing whenever I was watching him talk where I was like, really? I don't know. It does just kind of feel like a, a, a teen movie, you know, like where they'll like walk away and music plays or something, right? And then he walks away in slow motion. <laughs> Stop. The last things you said to her. I do. Cause he I'm going to be honest, like, hearing that, of him just say that. Yes, that was the last thing I said to her. When you're effing Eric in our bed, I hope you think of me. And then wa turns and walks out. It's a very dramatic thing to say, right? And it's like, it's like, da -da -da -da, this is the last thing I said. Am I the a-hole like Reddit? Like, you know, that kind of, that's what it, it, it literally reads as, I mean, what Chad are saying is like an American horror story, like Emma Roberts kind of moment, right? Um, But we'll, we'll read what he has to say. But again, I didn't have any bad intentions with what I said. And I know Josh wasn't accusing me of having any bad intentions, but um, it's just like, it's dramatic. And that's what I said. It's kind of dramatic and it was the only thing where I kind of side-eyed it a little bit because it, you know, sounded like a, a teen movie plot. And 
I don't think Josh took any offense to it, nor did I mean to offend him. And... Let me, let me play a little bit more. Oh, Des was talking about the Emma Roberts, the new stuff that happened with her uh, cast member. Oof. He tells it like I said that shit. <laughs> I did you that. Think that. Maybe, but he said that in his head when he was laying in bed angry. Yeah, yeah. this the, <laughs> the idiot store called, and they're all out of you. It's fine. Another so yeah, the crew members as well were saying that we're basically doing this where that was a, you know, that statement from Josh, this is the last thing I said. And then he, you know, drops the mic like, Dan was like, oh, and he, this is what he wanted to say when he was sleeping. I don't, I believe that Josh said this. I'm not, I, I've not, I've, listen, so many of what me and Josh says links up as well. And it doesn't even have to do with me because there's stories with other people that are speaking up as well. I believe Josh with what he's saying, right? In so many different aspects, not even just this. But for me, I just felt that it appeared like a lot was, like he didn't finish his sentence or something, right? Like it was just kind of like, Okay, you dropped the mic, but did you pick it up again? Because, like, what? So you've said that sentence, you've walked out, and then you've both posted your divorce videos or whatever. So he has cleared it up, and he has said it a little bit more. But again, I do just want to say that I didn't mean any bad intentions by it. I know that Josh knew that I didn't have any bad intentions. I'm sorry. If something sounds dramatic, I'm going to say it's dramatic. Like, and again, I had no bad intentions with being, like, you know, it sounds like a teen movie, like last sentence like you know what you say to like the bully whenever like you're like leaving at the end of the movie which i mean could be make sense with colleen you know what i mean make sense with colleen so it all makes sense but it was just something i still wanted to like say in that moment the santa reference I mean, that's like my fourth one today when you did do the you gunfire the pose the other day mm -hmm. maybe you're just like we're channeling the character Wait, a little bit forget the roman empire seinfeld how, how, often, how often do you think about seinfeld daily <laughs> daily there you go there you go but people in the early polls, I remember. All right. So anyway, that is the clip. So now you've seen the entire context of what I said. Josh said, Hey, man, totally understand how it seems like the last thing I said to her in person felt like a dramatic teen movie. It's all true, though. And you know what? I believe him. I believe him. Me saying it sounds very dramatic, my chat saying it sounds very dramatic, is not saying that we don't believe him. It's saying it sounds dramatic. And again, the situation was dramatic. Like, it, both are true at the same time, you know what I mean? It's not discrediting or, or, or anything against someone. It is just saying how it is. And that's what that was. But I did want to make this because he commented this and a lot of people were asking me to talk about it. Um, The night I rushed home after VidCon, so this was the night that he went home, obviously, from VidCon, and Colleen was apparently doing the party with people, and whenever Josh went home and it smelled like cigarettes, and that's what daddy likes for dinner... Red wine, cigarettes, that's what daddy likes for dinner. Remember that? Um, And then whenever she, he, he then said, like, whenever you're effing Eric, that was that night. And he came home. Colleen didn't think he was going to come home. He came home. That's that night. The night I rushed home after VidCon and then the last time I spoke with her in person were on two different days. Swip's video had to condense that part of the interview. Okay, that is not Josh's fault and it's not Swip's part. Do you realize how much work Swip did? This is on no one right now. This explains it. You know, this makes it sound less dramatic, obviously. Swip put in so much fucking work into this. Her team put in so much fucking work into this. But furthermore as well, Swip devoted and her team so much time to interviewing people that it is incredibly... What's the word? It is incredibly naive to think that Swoop could include every single thing that anyone said on an interview. Like, Swoop took the time. Th this is what I really, I want people to take in about Swoop. Swoop worked so fucking hard and you saw a lot of it, but Swoop worked so fucking hard and you didn't see most of it. Think about the hours of interviews that Swoop did with people where we haven't seen it, right? Where we haven't seen it. So, it, is it Swip's fault that, you know, that it sounded more dramatic than what it is? No. Is it Josh's fault? No. Is the topic so fucking broad? Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, when I hear him say this, oh, so what I said was kind of accurate. Sounds very dramatic. However, it's incredibly 
you cannot expect, and this I'm not saying Josh does, I'm saying to the audience, you cannot expect everything to be included, every and, every but, every comma, every whatever. The interviews that Swip and her team conducted, there were many, there were, there were like ones after the ones they already did, you know, the Zoom interviews. They devoted so much fucking time. Swip and two editors and researchers, by the way, people think this is like a fucking huge ass team. That is three people putting in fucking blood, sweat, and tears to a topic that they, it probably would have been easier to give up on, by the way, you know, but anyway, sorry, just, I get so, whenever it comes to Swip, I'm like, army rise, um, so this is no one's fault, I did just want to clarify, because we're not done yet, but because Josh commented, and I did want to repeat it on here, because I said it in my previous one, um, so what I said made sense, you know, it did sound like an ab abrupt ending to a story, and then going to, you know, the divorce, so this now clarifies that. However, I think it's completely understandable that that wouldn't have been included or whatever because Swip delicately chose things that are really, really, really important to the story. And that doesn't mean that things aren't important to the story, but at a certain stage, people cannot expect Swip and her team to put out like 10 hour long video. Like, are you really? Like, they, it's, it's impossible. It's impossible. I can't even fathom the amount of work that they put into like a three, four, five hour video. I, I, I can't even begin to imagine. I, I honestly just, I, I fucking love them so much. I fucking love them so much. Um, and obviously there's that personal attachment now, so I'm very biased towards Swip and her team, but I just have so much fucking respect for them and that fucking hard work that they've... So anyway, I'm just saying, this explains the situation, but there's, there's nothing bad, you know, that's gone on here. It's nice to clarify, but there's not, this, this is just what happens in, in editing. And Swip's team are fucking great editors, by the way. This is just like, this is just something that happens. Swip's video had to condense that part of the interview. Playlist happened next. Okay, wait. The night I rushed home after VidCon and then the last time I spoke to her were on two different days. Okay. Playlist happened next when I received the text from Steve and Nikki basically saying about Colleen talking shit. As far as the timeline goes, okay, VidCon night with the empty house smelling like cigarettes and alcohol happened. So that happened. Tensions were high after that. Then, so that was not when he said, you know, when you're fucking him, right? So yes, that did sound very dramatic because it sounded like, how can you go from that to that? You're like, so... I don't necessarily think I said anything wrong there. Josh isn't saying I said anything wrong. I'm just saying that if people think that I spoke out of place, right? These very clearly were on different days, so it makes sense why it sounded dramatic. Um, playlist happened, and that's where the texts were revealed. I went home and confronted her knowing that she had been lying to so many people. See, now this makes sense. We had a few days of conversations that didn't go very well. Then she made the decision about divorcing me and this matches up with Josh's video saying she's divorcing me. She's, you know, and how quickly the papers would be filed and how she would be making her video soon. I asked for a few days to get all my stuff together after she told me she made the decision to divorce me. The day she left the house to give me that time is when I turned and said that to her before she left. It was the final time I ever saw her in person. That makes sense. That makes sense. When Colleen, when he found out that she was lying, talking shit, the party had already happened days, you know, prior. They were their days of, you know, just fighting. And then she says, I'm divorcing you. Doesn't give Josh any time. Then goes, I'm going to leave. Make my video. You can have time to make your video. He then said to her, when you're fucking Eric, I hope you think of me. That makes sense. And that's actually not teen movie like that's that's a hurt fucking husband so that makes perfect sense and i appreciate him clarifying because he didn't like this is you know he could have he could have watched this video and been like oh annoying comment from adam like fucking whatever i appreciate him clarifying this because a lot of people were asking this as well the text came a couple of months later after she threatened me with lawyers that was my final communication with her ever so that is saying both stories are true regardless of how cringy or dramatic they sound no they don't sound cringy or dramatic anymore now that like you know what i mean the timeline 
it's not cringy or dramatic anymore. It's not cringy or dramatic anymore at all. It's actually a very fucking hurt husband saying something that I think most people would say in that. And how she was able to just walk away from that after like hurting him that much is fucking terrifying. And this makes perfect sense. And I'm so glad he clarified. He didn't need to, but I'm really fucking grateful because in my head as well, that was the only thing where I was kind of a little bit about. And now I'm like, oh, like, just thought I'd give more context, bud. Also, your rendition of my old song at the end was hauntingly beautiful, yet funny at the same time. Thank you. Thank you, California. You're welcome, Josh. Um, I cannot thank him enough for clarifying because now it makes sense. And I'm not saying that what he was saying in the interview didn't make sense or anything, but it's, listen, speaking as someone who has studied editing and stuff in college, that's really the only thing I have to my name, it is swooped an entire interview with him and then did a zoom interview with him can you imagine the amount of questions that haven't reached the public like all these different things the process of condensing a story is so challenging and i'm so glad that i'm not doing it i'm so glad that you know swip and her team are doing it because i i i i cannot do it and i think people need to realize that the amount of work, again, that Swip and her team have done is actually unfathomable. Messed up that word a little bit. You didn't hear anything. So I do want to give a shout out to them. And this is not a situation at all on anyone's behalf. But I appreciate Josh clarifying because now this, this minor detail of, of me just saying that one sentence sounded dramatic. Wasn't a big deal on my end. Like I didn't, I wasn't causing it. I just said that one little sentence. That was it. That was it. That was it. Now it all makes sense. So shout out to Josh. This now makes sense. So now we know he came home, VidCon, night of cigarettes and alcohol with Eric. And tensions were high. Playlist happened when he saw the text of her talking shit. He then confronted her knowing she'd been lying. Few days of conversations that didn't go well. She then made the decision to divorce him, told him, said she was getting papers filed quickly how she was going to make her video. She left, told Josh, you know, make your video or whatever. That's when he said then, when you're fucking Eric, I hope you think of me. That makes sense. And that's not dramatic. That's not cringy. That's not teen movie. That's a hurt fucking man who has been broken down by a... So... God, just when you think is is like, his story can't get any, like, more fucking devastating or something like that. Yeah, also, he didn't send us a picture of the cat that was on the cat tire. In my video, I saw a cat tire, and I was like, wait, does he have a cat? He hasn't seen... So, Josh, if we could clarify that, please. <laughs> um, So, shout out to him. I really appreciate him saying that. He didn't need to, and I really appreciate him clarifying it. And, th and that makes perfect sense. And again, I want to close this by saying shout out to Josh. Thank you for clarifying. And especially, shout out to Swip. Shout out to Swip. Shout out to editors and researchers. I cannot imagine the workload that they are doing and have done. And that is fucking devotion to the craft. And I'm going to say it again, but the street, the streamies next year, I'm not even talking nominations or award. I'm talking, you know, in the little fucking videos they do in between. Yeah. Swip there. The amount of work she has done and the good she has done for the YouTube community. I'm just going to go on a Swip tangent. So I'm going to end myself here, but anyway, good work. Swip has done. I think she's fucking incredible. I'm going to leave it here. Love and leave ya. Love and leave ya. I don't know if I already said it or not. I have an awful memory, but I'm vlogging every single day on my second channel. Pin comment down below. Bye.